The main thing that prevents the average racing fan from getting up and hitting the track is, of course, money. It has been reported that even the cost to start one Arca race lies around $50,000 for top-tier teams. That puts the full season somewhere around a million dollars, which would only go up more and more as a driver goes to the NASCAR ranks, from the Truck Series to the Xfinity Series to even the Cup Series, where a full season costs upwards of $15 million. That said, very few people can afford to get started racing at even the entry level of NASCAR. And many of those that can, especially in the case of young drivers, come from an extremely wealthy background. These are the so-called paid drivers, young guys and girls that come directly into the national stock car racing scene regardless of their past accolades or lack thereof, because their family is willing to pay for their rides. For some paid drivers like Ty Gibbs, the grandson of Cup Series team owner Joe Gibbs, his position helped him get to the best equipment that money could buy, but he proved that he deserved it as he won the ARCA championship in his first full-time season, the Xfinity championship the year after, and is now putting together a respectable rookie cup season at just 20 years old. For some others, such as Drew Dollar, who I made a video on earlier in this series, their racing careers never amounted to anything, and quite honestly, all they were known for was wrecking. However, I would say the majority of paid drivers are just average or a little below average in their racing abilities. Take, for example, Paul Menard and Michael Annette, who both made full careers in NASCAR thanks to sponsorship from their family's businesses, but who were very clean, consistent drivers that most of the time just went under the radar. That is also the category of driver I would consider Spencer Gallagher, the son of airline entrepreneur and GMS Racing founder Mari Gallagher. But still, even with improving results as the years went on, Spencer turned out to be a NASCAR bust, and in this video we're going to take a look back at how exactly that came to be. Back in 2011, when he was 21 years old, Spencer kicked off his NASCAR career a little later than most, with multiple starts across ARCA and the then K&N Pro Series East and West divisions. Driving for Clark Racing, a small team owned by a family friend named TJ Clark, Gallagher didn't find much success initially, only finishing a best of 15th in his three ARCA races, and a best of 7th in his eight East and West races. And that is only including the races he made, because he actually failed to qualify for three East and West races, which for those series is pretty embarrassing. Nevertheless, the next year he returned to Clark's team for a full-time effort in ARCA, where he would compete for Rookie of the Year honors. With full funding from Allegiant Air, of which his father is the chairman of, Spencer completed the entire season, but he only scored six top ten finishes. His best was a seventh place at Winchester, and he went on to also finish seventh in points. While that might sound pretty bad for modern ARCA standards, back in 2012, almost every race saw field sizes of 30 to 40 cars, so I'll cut him a bit of slack there, given that it was his rookie year, and that he was driving for a new team. Also around halfway through that season, ownership of Spencer's number 23 car switched from TJ Clark to Mari Gallagher, thus officially forming GMS Racing. For 2013, Spencer was planned to run full-time in ARCA again, and throughout the first quarter of the season, put together very inconsistent results. On one hand, he had his career-best race at Salem, in which he rallied from his 15th place starting spot to finish runner-up. But on the other hand, he also crashed out four times in the first eight races. In the last of which at Michigan was worse than it may have appeared. While running strong in fourth place with 28 laps remaining, Spencer cut a right front tire and made hard contact the outside wall. Nothing too out of the ordinary, we've seen it countless times before and after, but at the exceptionally high speeds of Michigan, the hit was enough to give him a concussion to put him on the sideline for the next two races. Returning at Chicagoland, Gallagher finished out the season with much more consistency, only crashing out once more and ending the year with five top fives and eight top tens total. Additionally, his average finish vaulted up from a 17.4 in 2012 to a 12.3 in 2013. Though this was certainly an overall improvement from the year prior, he fell back in the standings to finish 10th due to the missed races. The first two from his concussion, and a third being a withdrawal from the Decoin State Fairgrounds race. So while he was at least beginning to show potential in ARCA, that was not the case in the Truck Series. With a new GMS racing team, Spencer attempted five races in the Allegiant sponsored number 21 truck, but only finished a single one under power, that being a 20th place at Texas, as he crashed out of two races and failed to qualify for another two. For 2014, Spencer would once again race in both ARCA and the Camping World Truck Series, though part-time in both. After competing in the first nine consecutive ARCA races, Spencer would get to crash out of a single race and recorded three top fives and four top tens, including another runner-up at Salem. 
However, either due to a lack of funding or a shift of focus to the truck series, Mari would only enter Spencer in the number 23 car in two more races that year. But Spencer would make both of them count. First in the 11th round of Chicagoland, he puts together the first dominating performance of his career, leading 70 of the 100 laps that day. Unfortunately for Spencer, his time out front ended on just lap 72 as his car became uncontrollably loose to the point that he not only lost the lead, but sunk back to finish a disappointing 6th place after showing such promise earlier on. Now with the urge to win at an all-time high and knowing that he had the speed and ability to do so, Spencer entered the season finale at Kansas Speedway with one goal in mind. Spencer Gallagher choosing the outside lane. Inside to Josh Williams. There will be two laps to go when the green flag goes back in the air here at Kansas. Great restart by that 23 is Spencer Gallagher. How about Ross Kenseth in that outside lane pedaling toward the front? We may be close to three wide when we get to one. Mason Mitchell tucks back in behind Josh Williams. Spencer Gallagher starting to pull away as they come off turn two. The battle is for second. Ross Kenseth outside of Josh Williams. Mason Mitchell inside of Cody Coughlin. All these drivers battling for position. Spencer Gallagher's loving that these guys are racing side by side behind him. Coming to the white flag, guys. Mile and a half to the first career win for Spencer Gallagher. How about this battle for position? Josh Williams, Ross Kenseth, Mason Mitchell is there, Cody Coughlin, the 15 of John West Townley. Look at Ross Kenseth in his first mile and a half race. What a fantastic job by this young man. Leaders off a of turn four. It's going to be an easy drive to the checkers. First time in his career, Spencer Gallagher, a winner in the ARCA Racing Series, presented by Menards. And for Mason Mitchell, he comes home in the fifth position, and he is your 2015 ARCA Racing Champion. Spencer was able to hold on after that late race restart and finally won his first career ARCA race, while it was the 20-year-old owner-driver Mason Mitchell who took that year's championship. However, Spencer was not the first GMS driver to win a race, rather that would be his teammate of Grant Infinger who ran full-time the number 90 car. While Infinger had six wins total that year, only two of them came with the GMS, as Mari Gallagher gained ownership of the car from Team BCR Racing at around the halfway point of the season. And the GMS team wasn't able to close up the year the way they'd hoped to. At the time when Gallagher bought the car, Infinger was still leading the points with nine races left, and though they started off strong with a P4 at IRP, it was all downhill from there. In the final eight races, Infinger did win two times, but also went behind the wall four times with two engine failures and two crashes. One of those crashes was even the cause of that late race restart at Kansas Speedway, as while running second with just eight laps to go, Infinger suffered some type of breakage in the left front of his car and slammed up into the outside of the wall. All these problems were what led to Mason Mitchell eventually overtaking Infinger in points, because even though he had just one win, he ended the season with one more top five and three more top tens than Infinger. Regardless, it was still a solid ARCA season for Spencer Gallagher, and yet another one of improvement. And in his nine truck starts that year, he also improved from his disastrous debut the year before. Although he crashed out three times, Spencer made the most of his first truck series super speedway star with an impressive third place at Talladega, and recorded an overall average finish of 18.0. So for 2015, Spencer finally made the jump to full-time truck series racing with GMS, and in my opinion, it was fairly warranted. Driving the number 23 truck still with sponsorship from Allegiant, Gallagher had a respectable rookie season all things considered. While he didn't truly contend for any wins, he tallied up one top 5 and 6 top 10 finishes along with only 2 DNFs, which was good enough for a 10th place points finish. By far the highlight of his season was his run at Gateway and then driving for Lineman 200. Not only because it was his alone top 5 of the season, but because he fought hard all day to go from running out of the top 10 to finish in 2nd place. His day began to turn around with 44 to go, and under caution for a stalled truck, Gallagher's crew decided to play the pit strategy game, opting for only two tires while most of the leaders came down for four. This boosted him all the way up from 11th to 2nd on the restart, and thanks to both of the dominant trucks that day of Eric Jones and Matt Crafton having issues late in the going, Gallagher was still able to hold on with his older tires and finish in 2nd place. 
Although Austin Dillon was able to score GMS Racing's first Truck Series win that year, Spencer didn't do that bad in comparison to his other teammates. And of course, with a bit of nepotism working in his favor, he would return to his ride for his second full-time season in 2016. Early on, it was looking like Spencer might have even been on the path to a breakout season, as in the first six races, he had scored five top tens in a row. Leaving the sixth the race at Charlotte, he was sitting fourth in points, but unfortunately, that was as good as it would ever get for the driver of the number 23, because he proceeded to go on a nine-race stretch over the summer, where he crashed out twice and never finished better than 12th. Heading into the cutoff race at Chicagoland for the start to the inaugural Truck Series playoffs, Spencer had sunk to a miserable 13th place in the standings and was in a must-win situation. And no, there's no Cinderella story there, he didn't win, but still, he finally broke his top 10 drought and had a really solid race. Starting the weekend off with his first career pole award, Gallagher led the first eight laps and was able to overcome early problems on pit road to finish in seventh. So while he didn't have the speed to beat Kyle Busch that day, that race was surely a confidence builder for the struggling team, and following mediocre finishes of 14th and 11th in the next two races, he returned to Talladega right where he left off two years before. He has too big a lead, he has too big a lead! Oh, there goes They're Cameron bumping Haley. in the back! Haley is into the wall! No caution yet. Infinger trying to hold on. Now Gallagher making a charge from the inside. Ben Kennedy pushing hard on the back of the 24 truck of Grant Infinger. Through turn Coming four, to coming to the tri-oval. Who's gonna win? Is Infinger gonna be able to hold off his teammate, Spencer Gallagher? His first career win, Grant Infinger does it at Talladega. How about that? Hometown boy does good, huh? Isn't that great? Great That's, for Grant Infinger. That is awesome. After the second runner-up finish of his Truck Series career, the rest of Spencer's season fell back into the same pattern of inconsistency he was on before. But still, he had one more great race, two weeks later at Texas Motor Speedway. There he won his second pull award and went on to lead the first 40 laps of the race, an 88 total, making him the driver with the most laps led. With 23 laps remaining, Gallagher was still leading the way with a one-second gap over second-place Johnny Sauter, but the caution would come up for the third time that day, for the caution clock. In fact, all three cautions that day were for the caution clock running out, because an all-green flag race would just be too boring. While well, at Texas, they might have had a point, but regardless, a terrible pit stop for the 23 team under caution would drop Gallagher back to 7th for the restart. And at Texas, passing is not exactly easy, so he was unable to make any progress and finished right there in 7th while Sauter took the win. With two finishes outside the top 20 to end the year, Spencer landed a disappointing 12th in points with two poles, one top 5, and eight top 10s total. His average finish did improve slightly from the year before, from a 12.7 to 11.3, but at this point, there was really no excuse to not be winning races in GMS equipment. After all, his teammate of Johnny Sauter went on to win that year's championship with 3 wins, 12 top 5s, and 19 top 10s. His other full-time teammate, Ben Kennedy, was able to pick up a win and finish 7th in points. And even two of the team's part-timers, Kyle Larson and Grant Infinger, were each able to score one win. Though he was clearly the weak link, Spencer had shown to Texas and even to Talladega that he was capable of winning. So given that, the next logical step would be another season in trucks, right? Let him get a win and at least make the playoffs to prove that he's worthy of top equipment. I mean, he's on the right path and everything. Nope. For 2017, GMS Racing decided Spencer was ready to go full-time in their brand new Xfinity Series program. What could go wrong? Yeah, 2017 was not a good year for Spencer Gallagher. The year prior, he made both his and GMS Racing's first seven starts where he impressively stayed out of trouble in all of them and recorded an average finish of 21.0 with the best finish of 8th in the Summer Daytona race. That would be about what I would expect from a new team in any series, but in 2017, those numbers did not improve at all. They got worse, actually. In his first full-time Xfinity Series season, Spencer only finished inside the top 10 a single time with a 10th place in the Spring Richmond race, totaled 8 DNFs including 7 for crashes, and held a miserable average finish of 24.4. And if you thought that was bad, he was embarrassed in the standings, finishing 19th overall and being beaten by Tyler Reddick, who only made 18 starts, and Dakota Armstrong, who only made 27 starts. And the driver who finished right behind him was Bubba Wallace, who only made 13 stars due to a lack of sponsorship early in the season. The only good thing going into 2018 for Spencer was that it couldn't get much worse. And much to his credit, it got a lot better. 
at least a start, because after the first seven races, he had put together four top ten finishes, including even a fifth place run at Bristol. It was apparent already that either Spencer or his team more likely both had flipped a major switch, and over the course of the offseason, it got from running in the middle of the pack or worse on average to contending for top tens on a weekly basis. Going into the ninth round at Talladega, the 23 team must have known they were closer to victory than ever. In this season over at Daytona, Spencer qualified 4th and finished 6th, so not only did the GMS Xfinity team have an outstanding super speedway setup, but their driver was coming off a runner-up finish in his most recent truck race there. And after qualifying up front again, this time in 3rd, all the pieces finally fell together. No 83 uh, pull mode today, it. boys. And I think it's still stumbling and running just a little bit right now. That's a heartbreaker. And you see the three Got car cars, maybe. Looks like maybe the same thing for him. Yeah, did, he, did he run out of gas or just get shuffled to the bottom there? I don't know. I was watching. I couldn't I couldn't tell exactly what happened. They've got to make it back around to the start finish line. You're going to see the blocks. You're going to see the runs. You're going to if it's going to happen. It's got to happen now. Because that's what you don't know. You have to, if that caution comes out once they cross that start finish line, the race is over. So you need to be in the lead right here. And here we go right here. Christopher Bell right behind Tyler Reddick. He made a great block to stay in front of him. And then Spencer Gallagher on the bottom. Been in the show Look all at this day move. long right there. Racing for the lead. Now it's all about who gets that push at the right time. Unfortunately, Spencer's got no one behind him right now. He's going to have to hang strong on the bottom. But here's where Tyler Reddick, you know, he's trying to side draft, but he has to stay in that mirror and make sure he's looking at uh, Christopher Bell. And like you said earlier, this is the most intense part of the last couple laps when you don't know whether it's going to end or not. And Spencer Gallagher has basically passed him on his own. He's taking and now at this point, he's blocking his butt off and they they may crash at any moment right now. This middle line's coming, lots of momentum. Spencer Gallagher is definitely doing a good job blocking, but he is way out there, guys. He's way out there. And look at Cole Custer. Holy cow, a big run. Bottom lane's coming. The seven car. And look at Elliott Sadler coming and pushing that teammate. And this is where Talladega is a lot different than other racetracks. And here comes the start finish line. And Spencer Gallagher is going to win his first How race. About How about that? Right. That's awesome. What a great that moment for that awesome. team. This is going to be a celebration. Oh, man. This is going to be the most fun interview I think we've had all day. <laughs> Elliot Sadler coming back somehow and winning that Dash for Cash money, $100,000. But how about Spencer Gallagher? What him and his family has put into this sport? I mean, that just, it gave me goosebumps to watch him win that race right there. And I can promise you, folks, for those of you that don't know who Spencer Gallagher is, you are getting ready to see <laughs> one of the best interviews and the most excitement that you have ever seen from anybody winning the race. And, and I think in the garage and in this booth, I think everybody is really, really happy to see Spencer win. And, you know, like you say, for his family and team, for everything they put into this sport. What a great moment. <laughs> and we've all oh felt God, this. I mean, it's just... After finally breaking through to score his first NASCAR win and locking himself into the playoffs, it was looking like Spencer Gallagher might actually have a long-term feature in the sport, especially if he could build upon his early season consistency. But shockingly to everyone, he wouldn't be racing the next week. That's because just three days after his big win, he was suspended indefinitely by NASCAR due to violating their substance abuse policy. Just like that, Spencer went from being on top of the sport to being banned from it in less than a week. A wide variety of fill-in drivers took over the number 23 car in the races to come, such as Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman, and Johnny Sauter, but none of them were able to score any more wins. Then a few months later, after he completed the Road to Recovery program, Gallagher was officially reinstated by NASCAR and allowed to make his return in the 17th race to Kentucky. But there would be no chance of making the playoffs for Gallagher, even if he was able to win again, as NASCAR was unwilling to grant him a waiver for his missed races. And so he was demoted to part-time status for the remainder of the year at GMS, with even more fill-ins taking the wheel after Kentucky, most notably with Bill Elliott returning after a five-year retirement to make his final career start at Road America. Nevertheless, Gallagher finished the 2018 season strong with a road course top 10 at Mid-Ohio and a great 5th place run at Dover. As a matter of fact, his season was still really good from a purely statistical perspective, as in 19 starts, he totaled the 1 win, 3 top 5s, and 10 top 10s, along with only 1 DNF. His average finish also leapt up 50% from the year before, from a 24.4 to a 12.2. 
and his part-time effort still landed him 18th in the final standings, one position better than the year before. Additionally, even after his suspension, it was still given the opportunity to make his Cup Series debut for BK Racing. Driving in a one-off deal at Watkins Glen, Spencer qualified in 34th and ran in the back of the pack before overheating issues relegated the team to an even worse 35th place finish, multiple laps down. So after a career season, the sum captures first Xfinity Series win, improve his average results by 50%, and even get a bit of cup experience, it seemed like Spencer might have been able to get off the hook and continue his progress the next year. But instead, he decided to pull a Carl Edwards and abruptly retire from racing entirely. When I first heard this news break back in 2018, I automatically assumed it was due to sponsorship issues surrounding his suspension or something of that sort. But the more I read into it, it really does seem like Spencer was just unsatisfied with being a full-time race car driver. According to him at least, he wanted to follow in his father's footsteps and become involved on the business side, so going forward he would continue working for GMS Racing, but in a managerial role. From what I can tell, Spencer's maintained his role at GMS to the present day, but since his final start in 2018, he has not entered a single NASCAR race, and at this point, likely never will. So, was Spencer Gallagher really that bad? In this case, I think he was actually better than most people remembered him, including myself. He wasn't exactly the quickest learner, and at the time of his departure, he definitely wasn't on any big cup team's radars, but he was so far from being a complete bust in regard to talent. In my opinion, he can still be called a bust simply due to driving top equipment in the lower series, never making it full-time in the Cup Series for reasons unrelated to sponsorship, but he's one of the most interesting cases I've covered so far in this video series. He led the most laps in two consecutive ARCA races and won in one of them, he led the most laps in a truck race, and he of course won an Xfinity race. On top of that, his performance was improving dramatically at the time he retired, and had he continued to drive, I wouldn't have been surprised to see him win at least a few more Xfinity races and eventually move up to race for Petty GMS in the Cup Series last year in place of Ty Dillon. But a lot, if not most of that, has to do with his father, because if not for GMS continuing to support and sponsor him throughout the years, he definitely would not have climbed the ranks as easily as he did, and probably wouldn't have lasted more than a few years in Arca or Trucks with other teams, before being released for either performance or sponsorship related reasons. Or in other words, if he had to solely depend on other teams and his own sponsorship, he wouldn't have been consistently promoted for being average. So in summary, I would say that he can definitely be labeled as a NASCAR bust, but he wasn't that bad of a driver, just a little below average at his worst, and a little above average at his best. But that's all for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like these. I recently put out a poll of my first community post here on the channel where I asked you guys what your favorite types of videos were, and so far it appears that the Were They That Bad series and the Best of the Worst series are about tied, and then the votes for the uh, Unique Races videos weren't too far behind either, so basically expect more of I, uh, each of these types of videos in the future, and maybe the occasional top 10 or driver or team tier list every once in a while. Oh, yeah, go vote on there if you want to. But anyway, that's all I've got to say. So until next time, peace out.